How's it going? This is part two of my point build and uh, in this video I'm just going to run through a few of the components that are actually going to be in the unit. Um, first of all, we've got a, a simple DVD drive that's borrowed and I've actually got to give it back. Um, I've got a power supply. It's an AX1200 which is actually sitting in another unit. Got to do a bit of uh, musical power supplies and swap them around. Um, we've got G Skull Rip Jaw Z Ram. These babies run at about 1800, and um, there's 16 gigabytes there. Um, because I'll be running a lot of virtual machines, it's actually quite important to have quite a fair bit of RAM, as they do have a habit of chewing up RAM. There'll be three, all in all, three virtual machines running, and quite data intensive, or in this case RAM intensive, um, uh, what do you call them? projects running in the background. A, um, a 3820 processor, an i7, and I've actually gone with the stock standard, the stock standard cooler, and there's a reason for that, which I'll explain a little bit later on. Um, I've actually gone with two drives. I did say I was going to build with one, but I've actually gone with two drives. Um, what I've found is that I have run drives previously in RAID, in a Stripe, but there's still there's still a lot of access time on that. It's still seen as a single drive, and there's still a lot of access time required from that one drive. So what I've done is I found the re really the only way to um, to stop a lot of shuddering on the operating system and um, and other programs running at the same time is to have two separate drives. Um, I'll be running my operating system and all the and all the virtual machines on one drive, and I'll be running the rest of Boink on another drive to try and split. Um, split the usage basically. Um, I've got um, the, um, the Velociraptor here uh, with my operating system and virtual machines and this what's, this is a 2005 model um, Barracuda and that's their cheapest chips and that will be running running Boink. Um, the Velociraptor wasn't actually that expensive all things said and done, so that's why I went for that. It's actually the middle of the range drive, all in all. And there we have UD3 Gigabyte. I'm actually quite interested to see how this board goes over a period of a year or two. Um, what do you normally get in these? This is the part, this is like a Christmas. Unraveling all this stuff, unless you get a chance to use it now. So, got all your cables, it actually given me four cables, two in each pack. Um, one of these dinky little bridges, which we don't actually need because I'm not really playing games on it. SLI, 
which means it can handle four cards, and this. But unfortunately, the unit that I'm putting it into won't allow enough room. You've got to be very careful when you're actually removing touching boards and sensitive equipment. Because the static electricity from when you're walking around on a carpet gives it basically an electric shock. And that doesn't necessarily have to destroy the component, but it can damage it and reduce the life of the board. And all sorts of all sorts of bad things can happen and it can all be to do with um, touching it, touching the componentry and actually damaging in damaging the, um, the circuits. Um, <coughs> as you can see, four way, but unfortunately the case that I'm going to put it into won't allow for that last card. So I've taken the card and I've put it into a different unit, into a different slot in a different unit. Uh, which this will allow three cards and later on there's a possibility I may find a uh, an enclosure which I can put into the rack that will allow the fourth card. Um, the cards when the cards lay the cards lay across the board in this way. Now the thing I only thing I am worried about is that the UD fives and sevens and they only have three but they also have a heat pipe that comes out and runs right around the board and ends up over here. A lot of that heat ends up and it ends up moving away from that heat sink and spreading out across the other two heat sinks that would be normally be here. Um, with the cards covering that heat sink, I am actually a little bit worried about the amount of heat that will build up in there. Um, as I say, there is quite a fair bit of heat. Other than that, the SATA. SATA, drew, um, SATA connectors are all facing away because the cards actually travel out quite a distance they do actually need to face away at right angles otherwise you can run into major problems these two, there's two over here which I'm not exactly sure why they're actually over there by themselves but um, since that card won't be there and since because we won't need to use the, those two yeah, we can leave them, leave them alone in the corner card that hits that one's in another machine hits that one's empty. And here we go. Sapphire HD 7970s. This is what I've been waiting for. This is cool. these cards you get all the little cables and bits and pieces and a little box below its own separate little enclosure which is quite cool because it's all nice and neat and tidy you know fighting through a weight of cables now as I said before the reason why I want I've got these cards is best thing. When you buy stuff you don't buy, I certainly don't buy old stuff. And um, oh. What happened? It's unable to use the flash because the battery's low. Wait, no, sweet. Has it stopped? No, it's all good. Okay, that's cool. Um, like that. A little covering. These cards aren't restricted through um, dual precision, they're, they're exactly half of single precision, unlike NVIDIA which is, um, which is governed. Unlike some people you see, 
I'm going to actually hold these cards really nicely. Some of them just grab it, touch it all over the place. Again, these are static sensitive items. You can't just go grabbing at them on the back. And you can't look. About the only thing they don't do is run, run them around like a car on the, on the carpet. So you can't actually do that. You've got to be very careful. The static electricity can just destroy them very quickly. So that's one. Zip through this one. Yes, I cannot wait to get these going. It's going to be really interesting. Two. To everyone at the overclock.net website, I'll try and get these going as fast as I can. I'm actually quite uh, really quite interested in getting these going. These are all going to go into this enclosure. This is what one of three that I'll have initially. So I've got three units thus far that can go in there. Um, I was originally going to go for a U4 unit. Originally I was going to go for the full, a U4 unit, but I ended up getting a U5. If not by mistake, but at the same time, it has 120 millimeter fans. It has a 120 millimeter fan there instead of two 80s. I need to move as much heat as humanly possible out of the unit as fast as possible so that things don't necessarily get hot inside the unit because these cards don't necessarily dish all the hot air outside the unit. Some of the hot air is recycled back into the unit and we like to tr try and keep things as cool as possible. Which goes back to my original um, original reason why I'm using a standard cooler is because when you use upright coolers, the air's, yes the air is blown out of the case, but a lot of the componentry on the board relies on the fact that the air is like the original Intel heatsinks and AMD heatsinks, they blow down onto the board and across the board cooling all the components that sit on the board. And this is the real reason why I have carried on with the stock cooler. To try and keep all those components on the board cool, including that, all the RAM as well. So it does two jobs in one. And also too, this unit won't necessarily be overclocked. Not initially. And that's really all I've got at the moment. Um, I'm going to endeavour to, endeavor to um, put the unit together and then I might um, have another video. So thank you for watching.